Why is shipbuilding and dry docking services like the one your company offers in short supply? Thank you very much, Anisha. Uh, the first thing I'd like to correct is that um, my company is not into shipbuilding. My company is into ship repair. Uh, having said that, I'd be quite glad to uh, comment on your question. Um, in Africa, you find that most of the yards around can only at the moment engage in ship repair. Uh, most of the countries uh, do not have, as at now, effective power sources, and of course, the steel industry in some cases are very comatose. Now, these are two principal ingredients you need to be able to build a ship. You must have a steady power supply, you must have a uh, steady and reliable source of steel. Now, having said that, uh, in the African country, you have quite a lot of ships of different categories. You have uh, ships that are into international trade, you have ships that are in uh, coastal trade. Uh, what is really lacking right now is uh, the uh, adequate provision of maritime infrastructure to maintain and dock these vessels, to enable the owners to maintain these vessels to comply with ports and flag steel control regulations. So I have always been an advocate of ship repair facilities being increased to bring the vessels that are already operating in our waters to operate at minimum international requirements. Mm -hmm. So the Having question to be that, asked oh, is not necessarily why we aren't uh, building ships or repairing uh, ships more so, but possibly what we should be doing if that is the end goal. So what are some of the first steps that the, the continent should be taking in that regard? I think the first step uh, the continent should be taking in that regard is that the respective governments should have the political will to put in place maritime ship repair infrastructure. I think first, uh, South Africa is taking the lead in this respect because if you go to South Africa from Cape Town to Durban and the likes, you have a lot of ship repair facilities. And my understanding there is that the government of South Africa actually provides through their port authorities build these infrastructures and then the stakeholders come in and lease these facilities to provide the service. Now what we have take a place like Nigeria is where you have the likes of us, for example, who are into ship repair, having to first of all be a ship build, a ship repair yard builder before going into the repair. So you are involved in acquiring the land, you are involved in raising the respective finances you need to put the infrastructure in place before now engaging in the service you want to render. And this becomes very onerous. And that's why you find that in a place like Nigeria, after 10 years of us being in operation, we remain the only privately mm -hmm. owned indigenous ship repair yard. Well, for now, one difficult. can only assume, Greg, that that spells good news for a player like Stars Shipyard, where a competition isn't rife, where 85% of vessels operating in Nigeria look for ship repair facilities in other countries. I mean, what impact has this entire scenario had on your business and its operations? Well, my passion is not for me or for my com company or my business. My passion is for the Nigerian maritime industry. I mean, I don't, I don't think it's good for me or anybody that 85% of the vessels operating in Nigerian waters have to leave this country to go and look for docking facilities, even as far as uh, Walvis Bay in Namibia. I would like to see a situation where there are many more stars shipyards owned by other indigenous players or even foreign players to be able to keep this huge capital flight that is living in this country within this country and that could be used to develop further the maritime industry. So as far as my business is concerned, we're doing well, but it's not going to be all about us. It's going to be about the country, about the national interest as far as the maritime industry is concerned.